So we're here at Trek, and uh, Dr. Jonathan Crane is just showing us the pitaya or dragon fruit, and I was hoping you could show us all. Okay. So on the on the dragon fruit. Okay. So this is our rickety trellis. It actually needs to be replaced. As you can probably see. But what you're seeing is this is um, just one variety, and we've been using it in trials to try and register some fungus fungicides for use in Pattaya's because fun, fungi are a big problem in Pattaya production here, um, especially with the rains and with the warm temperatures, it's just about everything. Is, is fungus a problem like wherever it grows or is South Florida just not a real happy place for it? No, it's, it's, it, fungal problems are prevalent in any place that has any kind of uh, wet weather. Um, but even there are some fungi that are a problem here that are not a problem in other places, but they have other fungi or diseases that are a problem that we don't have because of our climate. So I would say uh, fungi are a problem everywhere, but it depends on where you are, which one may or may not be a, a problem. And there's several here, but one recently we just had a workshop identifying one of the major uh, fungal problems here. Um, and you've got a little bit of example. Of yes. Here. And so this, yeah, so exactly. So you're seeing symptoms uh, of the fungus um, and the results of it. And what you're seeing here also is that we were doing a efficacy trial to figure out which fungicide might work. And we didn't have enough disease. So we sprayed them with, we sprayed them with spores. We sprayed them with spores first and let the disease, you know, and then started trying the fungicide. So we sort of sacrificed uh, the plants and so that's sort of the situation. We're actually putting in more uh, dragon fruit uh, in the future. So um, you're growing them on uh, pressure treated wood and, yes. uh, and then how, I mean you've got obviously uh, ground, uh, ground cloth and uh, little micro sprayers. Or, um, so, what else do you do uh, to grow dragon fruit? Here? Well, we you know we do fertilize periodically. We do irrigate periodically when, it's, especially when it's got fruit, when it's flowering. Um, and then, you know, commercially, people would begin actually to start the sanitation to remove what, what we found out recently. There was a, There's a fungus here that really, the key is to control it before it gets to flower the fruit. So you get the inoculum out of the field. So that takes coming in and pruning and removing diseased sections of the plant. Removing that tissue from the planting and destroying it. So you reduce the inoculum level that's available for spreading the disease during flowering and fruiting. That's the first thing. Then during the flowering and fruiting, there are a few selective fungicides that you would use periodically to protect the fruit as it grows. And that's sort of the same. But really, you're talking about December, January, February, March, April, you should be coming in and removing and pruning out this, this, this uh, infected material. So I mean, you have a lot of infected material purposely here. Somebody came and sprayed it all over right. here because I mean, that you just we touched on it is you are trying to get more fungicides registered for use on dragon fruit and so on. And in order to do that, we need to show that it's effective and that it doesn't pass through into the fruit. Exactly, exactly, 100%. So what we do is we test, we compare fungicides, figure out which one is the best, and we do this in conjunction with our plant pathologist, uh, Dr. Gazis. And so we've done, we actually did a few trials this year, some other trials. Um, so we figured out which one works best, and then we try to go ahead and get that one registered. And so we have to spray the plants and, un and don't spray some others. And then when they flower and fruit, we collect the fruit. The fruit is then taken to a residue lab. They look for residues in the fruit. If it passes where you know, you're not seeing residues or it's extremely low and there's supposedly not an issue, then we move ahead and get try to get EPA to register. It's a, it's a program called IR4, Interregional Project Number 4, which means nothing. <laughs> um, but it's a better way to say it, it's the Minor Use Pesticide Program, and it's a consortium of USDA, EPA, land-grant universities, uh, pest control companies, and growers. 
and it's a big effort to try to get pest control substances registered for tropical fruit. Yeah, I was really surprised to learn that just in Miami-Dade, there's 600 acres of pataya yeah. uh, commercially grown. And, and so that, I mean, that's huge uh, for being a relatively new fruit to it the is. area. It is. Uh, I mean, I think it's a really nice fruit. The ones I've had, anyway, it's, very, it's been very tasty. And then, of course, they're supposed to make you live forever. Or right. <laughs> that's true of all fruits. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's really what this plant is about. And so we would like to do more work, so we're putting in some more trellises. We'll be able to take this one down, repair it. a little worse for wear, um, but we're, we're going to reestablish it. So is, this is year one on a three-year um, program to get the um, pesticides registered? Oh, very good question. So from the time that we do our first residue trial, let's say we've already passed the efficacy, that usually takes a year to get efficacy data, what, which product works. Mm -hmm. Once we identify that, then we petition, can we do a trial to get residue samples? That usually takes one to two years to get enough residue samples. We may have to repeat the trial anywhere from two to four times. And that may take two years. Usually it's one year. We try to just bang it out in one year and do a whole bunch of trials in one year. From the time we do our trial to the time it's actually registered that you can get a label and see that it's on there, usually takes three to five years. So it's a very slow, painful process. But you know, if you don't start, you never Right. You never finish, you never get it. So it's something that's been ongoing. We do, uh, Rebecca, who's the tenant who works with me uh, on this project, IR4, we do between 12 and 20 trials a year. And that sounds like a lot, but remember how slow it is. So we're always like three years ahead of what's going to actually come up. 